Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Good topic? Let's do it. For those who spend an extended amount of time at sea, what's the most unsettling thing you've seen in the ocean? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Submariner. Two water spouts at the same time not too far off were a neat sight. When I went to have a look in person on the monitors, I was unable to do so as we were setting up to dive. It would have been threatening to be a small craft, but it posed no real threat to us. Having something metallic sounding scraped down the side of the hull when we were at depth and moving along at a fair tick was disconcerting. It's mostly just a whole lot of nothing. The absence of things is what's disconcerting. The west coast is worse than the east coast. The distance from the west coast to Hawaii is almost the same as going across the entire US. Further still, from Hawaii to Japan, the Philippines, or Australia, it's such a huge nothing land-wise, other than a couple of specks. If you look at a map and just stare at all the blue and think of all the endless horizon upon horizon of nothing, it's wild. If you're out of a shipping lane, you know help is so far away, there's really no chance, even if you make it to the surface to tread water when it's cold. When I was young, we didn't have rafts as part of our survival gear. You just used a stank hood to try and get to the surface, to dive the bends and exposure when I first go in. We've got better stuff now, but it would still be a real challenge to survive. The time I was most scared for my life was in the middle of a storm around St. Pierre at Miquan. The ship always had some pent-up stress in the structure around the stern. We often had cracks right around the stern tank that had to be welded up by underwater welders once docked. A dry dock was scheduled for later that year to address this. Well, when we met a storm with hurricane force winds and 50 foot plus waves, I was in the engine room right around the stern. The ship was singing. The structure was ringing from the impact of the waves and the stress of the winds and the tank tops were buckling and unbuckling. I truly thought I was witnessing the ship splitting apart and going down. I walked back to the control room as fast as I could and warned the officer on watch. They called the bridge, and they decided to take shelter from the storm. We couldn't anchor, so we ran circles in the sea behind the island of St. Pierre to hide from some of the winds. It took around 24 hours, but the storm passed. Once docked, the divers found that the hull around the stern tank had cracked port to starboard, but the ship was otherwise fine. It really made me appreciate the engineering that goes into naval architecture. Sometimes there's an entire swarm of flying animals that get lost at sea in the wind, find your ship's lights in the middle of the night, and decide to stick around. It sucks when there's a swarm of moths. There must be millions of them. It's like moving brown fog that you can barely see through. They get everywhere. Leave a door even slightly ajar, and you'll be finding moths in random corners for days. One time, it was a swarm of small birds, clearly not seabirds. There must have been thousands flying around our boat all night. It was a shame to find dead birds all over the deck. We were miles from shore. I can only assume they got lost and were dying from exhaustion. Patrolling the med between Africa and Italy, the island of Lampedusa, during the Arab Spring 2011-2012, tons of migrant boats of people fleeing the Gaddafi regime. Humans stacked like cordwood on every horizontal surface of the boat, to the point where people were literally sitting on the edge of the exhaust stack, dangling their legs in the exhaust on some of the bigger ones, such as stolen tugboats. These boats aren't well maintained, and the people in charge aren't exactly professional mariners. What would normally be a minor fire or taking on a bit of water and having to pump it out turns into the loss of the boat when there are so many people on board you can't move. And that happens frequently. Or the engine dies and nobody on board knows how to fix it, so they drift and hope for a rescue that may never come. Why might the rescue never come, you ask? Because now the rescuing ship suddenly becomes responsible for taking on hundreds of migrants from an unseaworthy vessel and they have to take them to port themselves. No problem, right? Turn north to Europe, and you'll be there in a day. 
except once it's no longer a life or death situation, no country is required to grant clearance to that ship and their hundreds of migrants to enter their territorial waters. So when Italy has had enough of the illegal African migration, they just say no to ships that have done search and rescue. Now those ships are stuck with the migrants until their flag state can convince somebody to take the migrants. Two weeks? Three? I recall that the record was 23 days at the time. Other shipping companies take note and tell their captains not to respond to mayday calls. Totally illegal, but there's profit to be made. So yeah, the long way of saying that seeing migrant boats go by and knowing those people may never set foot on land again is pretty effed up. Off the coast of the Florida Panhandle, I was on a tiny 40-foot shitty commercial grouper boat. These boats are loud, especially when hauling gear, pulling in their line. All of a sudden, there was a massive boom and explosion less than 100 yards off the stern. Everybody hit the deck. The birds that followed the boat were long gone. The captain reckoned it was a missile that had been fired from the Air Force base and had missed its practice target. 100 yards is nothing on the open water, and this was definitely a near miss. If it had hit us, it would have completely destroyed the boat, and it's likely no one should have ever figured out what happened to us. After 15 plus years, it all tends to blend together as just another day at sea. Water spouts, dead bodies, people stranded at sea, adrift, unmanned boats, squalls, boats on fire including your own, massive seas, being on a 47 foot boat trying to rescue someone with an approaching hurricane in 27 plus foot seas. Then there are plenty of amazing things, gorgeous sunsets, the northern lights, the green flash at sunset, being hundreds of miles offshore, and the oceans are so calm as far as the eye can see that the water and horizon blend into one. I found a derelict sailboat while trudging across the Gulf of Mexico from Honduras to Key West. The old man sent me in another decky by boat to attach a line to the tow. Rough as F weather. We get there, and the lower cabin has a foot of water, nobody aboard, and the craziest BDSM porn magazines floating all through the lower deck. Letters and ID papers. I had no idea how long she'd been bobbing around. We got salvage rights, and the Florida government figured out who the guy was, and the boat was reported a month earlier. We let our boyfriend take it because he lived in Hollywood, Florida. That boat could probably tell some stories. Also, when we anchored off Key West, our chain got effed by something on the bottom when we drifted a bit. 200-year-old Spanish anchor. Bosun took that home as well. While in the Navy in the 80s, I dealt with the aftermath of a person having been lost overboard, all the while knowing that scuttlebutt was that he had been tossed because he was suspected to be gay, and all this while working in the chaplain's department, which was also communicating with the missing sailor's family via Red Cross messages, and being unable to speak up or bring this issue to light since I was a lowly E3 at the time. Yeah, shooting at sea lions doesn't seem like it would make you a lot of friends on the mainland, but I'm assuming they do it to prevent the sea lions from getting the fish that they're trying to catch. It's not very sporting. Um, not cool. But commercial fishing is wrought with shady activity, right? I was fishing on a small commercial vessel. A squid came up the lines once, and projectile vomits like buckets of watery ink at us before we could cut the lines. Also, we had to cut the line for a shark that didn't make it. I think the captain had to kill it to get it off the boat. Also, captains shooting sea lions that are following the boat is also unsettling. When you are in a fleet of fishing vessels and the call goes out over the radio that the sea lions are following and you hear in the distance shotgun blasts in the silence of the sea, yes, it is illegal. How about surreal? Once I was sailing out of Pohang, Republic of Korea, and the temperature was dropping. This can create a condition called sea smoke. As the air temperature drops over warm water, a fog-like smoke rises off the water. There was a short, sharp chop on the water and variable winds. It was like the sea was boiling, and our visibility dropped in minutes. Soon we were lost in a boiling fog, and it started to snow. Somewhere the sun was setting. 
It was one of the many amazing things I saw at sea. Surreal, unexplainable, unsettling, sure, but also magical. One day, kids, I'll tell you about whirlpools 50 feet across. I've spent a fair bit of time at sea for work, but I've never seen anything really crazy. One evening in late December, we were north of Prince Edward Island heading eastward on a 600-foot, 26,000-ton ship. We were slamming into waves so large that combined with the wind, the spray was hitting the bridge windows. The bridge is located 400 feet aft and seven decks up from the bow. Later that evening, I went for a wander and wound up playing cornhole with the crew in the empty helicopter hangar. The security camera footage made us look like we were blackout drunk. The ship was rolling and pitching so much. But the weirdest thing I've ever seen was actually out of my own 27-foot sailboat. We were tacking our way up into one of the harbors in the Canadian Gulf Islands, and in the distance, I can see this big orange ball buoy that's moving along. It's moving against the wind and against current, and winds up passing between me and my dinghy I was towing. I'm not sure what it was or why it was moving, other than it might have been related to the Navy exercise that was going on in the area.